Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. May I call the meeting to order. Ministers, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, welcome to Indonesia and I'm so delighted to host this G20 Foreign Ministers meeting in Bali, the island of God. Bali is a Hindu majority island in the country with the world's largest Muslim population. But this never stopped the Balinese people from living side by side in peace and harmony with their Muslim, Christian, Buddhist, and Confucian brothers and sisters. This is our experience in Indonesia. And take a look around us in this room. We are all different, and we cannot change this. But while we are different, we all live in the same planet. Here we are, sitting together for the first time to discuss important issues confronting all of us. I do hope that from the discussion, we will find ways to move forward. So let me take this opportunity to convey my highest appreciation to you all. I understand that many of you have te taken extra efforts to attend this meeting. Your presence today reflects your support to our G20 presidency and your friendship to the people of Indonesia. It also reflects your commitment to G20 to make G20 relevant and matters. And our meeting today will be organized in two main sessions. The first session is on strengthening multilateralism, which will focus on how G20 can ensure multilateralism delivers in view of current global challenges. The second session is on addressing food and energy security and will focus on how G20 can contribute as part of solution to current food and energy crisis. Before we begin our first session, allow me to share a few thoughts to frame our discussion. Colleagues, we are meeting today at a time of great challenges. The world has yet to recover from the pandemic. But we are already confronted with another crisis, the war in Ukraine. The ripple effects are being felt globally on food, energy, and fiscal space. And as always, developing and low-income countries are impacted the most. Global growth is projected to slow down to 2.9% in 2022 while inflation may reach up to 8.7% for developing countries. The question is, can we solve these global problems by our own? The answer is no. Global challenges require global solutions. But honestly, we cannot deny that it has become more difficult for the world to sit together current world situation makes people losing faith in multilateralism and its capacity to respond effectively to global challenges. Multilateralism is not perfect, but can we imagine if we have to live without multilateralism? I'm sure the situation will be even worse. Unilateralism will become the norm the mighty will take all. And surely, and I'm sure, this is not what we want. We all have the responsibility to safeguard multilateralism, to make it deliver. Multilateralism is the only mechanism where all countries, regardless of their size and wealth, stand on equal footing and are treated equally. The voices of all countries Big and small, north and south, 
development and develop must be heard. This is why Indonesia presidency invited for the first time representative of small island developing countries, our brother and sisters from PIF, CARICOM, and together with the African Union. Because in this polarizing world, their interests also matter. Their concern are also our concern. So multilateralism is on also the only way to coordinate effectively against the global challenges. Therefore, let's try to do our best. And multilateralism will only deliver if there is trust among us. Again, try our best to strengthen strategic trust and mutual respect and uphold all foundation and principle that we built since 1945 when the UN was established. The phrases in the UN Charter are very clear. To maintain international peace and security in conformity with the principle of justice and international laws, to develop friendly relations among nations, and to achieve international cooperation in solving international problems. So it is our responsibility to end the war sooner than later, and settle our differences at the negotiating table, not at the battlefield. It is also our responsibility to build bridges, not walls, to promote common interests, not self-interest, and to be part of solution. On our part, my president, President Joko Widodo, held intensive communication with many of your leaders. He actively participated in many international events, including the G7 and uh, Partner Country Summit, the BRICS Summit, and many more. He visited Kiev and Moscow just a week ago. Because peace and humanity are at the heart of our independent and active foreign policy as mandated by Indonesian constitution. So we always stand ready to contribute to answer challenges we face today. At my level, I did the same. I had spoken to all of you to find solution to our challenges. I did not only bring the views of Indonesia, but also the voice and interests of developing countries. Like I said before, we believe in the importance of building bridges. Therefore, let us use this opportunity to discuss how we can build trust and ensure multilateralism deliver, how to give peace a chance, and how to prevent triple crisis from turning into a new global catastrophe. Excellencies, colleagues, the world is watching us, so we cannot fail. G20 must be a beacon of solution to many global challenges, and only then G20 be relevant and benefit the world at large, not only its member. I hope this perspective will provide some enrichment to our discussion today. And may I now invite our press and media colleagues to leave the room as we are going to start our closed session. Once again, colleagues from the media, thank you very much for your presence this morning. Thank you.